Let's talk about another service in respect to multi-region use of Azure Private Link. Hopefully you've already come from this document here, which is the main white paper on this subject. This drills into the details of Azure DNS private zones, DNS integration, whether or not you need single zones that span global, multiple Azure regions, or if you need regional zones linked to specific Azure regions. The second page, which is associated with that, is a list of services in respect to how they behave. So fundamentally, there's two categories here. Services that can be linked to a global Azure DNS private zone, and you get regional failover seamlessly if a region fails. Generally, those services use alias or masquerade FQDNs as part of the service inserted in public DNS. In this video, we're going to dig into Service Bus and Event Hub, very similar components behind the scenes. And that's an example of a service that does use an alias FQDN, like Azure SQL Failover Groups. And these are in contrast to other services like Storage, Site Recovery, Key Vault, Cosmos, and others, where they fundamentally work differently and can't work with a single global zone uh, without manual intervention upon failover. So you may have also come to this video from the Event Hub Geo failover documentation, where it shows this diagram here for private link failover. First thing I want to call out in this document here is, this is a, a valid config. What we need to understand is, fundamentally in this diagram, you've got a private endpoint in this region and a private endpoint in this region both pointing to the same resource and same FQDN, the primary namespace here. What that means is you've got two IP addresses, these private endpoints have got different IPs, pointing to the same FQDN. And in a common global DNS infrastructure, that doesn't work. So to build this architecture that's shown here on the screen, you would need separate regional private DNS zones here, one link to this region, one link to this region, to return different A records, and then on which region you were either being served by in terms of DNS or where your virtual machine was located. And there's, there's several orders of effect in terms of the implications of making that design decision. What I want to show here is that you can build an architecture with Event Hub and Service Bus where you only have one private endpoint in each region, and that's got some benefits in terms of failover. And if you're a customer using the single Azure DNS private zone uh, global model, uh, I'll explain how it works. So in my diagram here on the left, I've got the same two regions. I've got a private endpoint pointing to my event hub in West US here. And I've got a private endpoint pointing to my East US event hub over here. So the event hub are separate resources, separate namespaces in each region. And then event hub has the concept of using namespace replicas to uh, build their pairings. My two event hubs there in different regions, a standard SKU required to do this namespace pairing. If I jump into my West US one and show you the geo recovery setting here, you see I've got it uh, paired primary West US, secondary East US, reflected by these two dots here. The important point is I get this alias name here. If I was trying to connect to my event hub or an API or a string, if I use this alias, then I can benefit from the seamless geo failover. I see if I look at this alias in public DNS, but the normal conditions you see it's directed to my West US endpoint first, and then private link gets a hold of it uh, and serves the private record if you're coming from a linked VNet or public record if you're not. And if I was to initiate a failover now, I would see that this initial redirect here points to East US. What that means is fundamentally in my Azure DNS private zone, I can have two A records because they point to different IP addresses because they're using different FQDNs, right? So this first FQDN is my West US event hub, and the second FQDN is my East US event hub. But the redirection to these host names happens after 
my alias has been redirected inside of public DNS. So long story short would be if this region fails and I have an application which is contacting Event Hub via the alias, let's say that application fails over to compute that's running inside of my red region and continues to contact that string. So in my case, this eh hyphen alias two dot service bus dot windows dot net. It would continue to work. So it would still go to Azure DNS private zones. It would now get back this 2.9 address, which would then go to my private endpoint here, which would take me to my DR namespace inside of the red box. And you can simulate this if you, if you do a failover, etc. Very, very similar concept to Azure SQL failover groups. So check out that video if you're interested in seeing a demo of this. But the long story short here, as I said, the, um, the main takeaway is you can get away with a single global zone with only one private endpoint in each region. Or if you want to go with this model here, you need separate regional zones. And there's pros and cons to each. These are covered in the, the main document here. But the big one to call out would be under normal conditions here, if you've got a VM here in region A, and it's contacting your secondary namespace for whatever reason, with the model I'm showing on the left here, that traffic would have to go from this VM over your global VNet peer in and into that private endpoint this way. Whereas in the model that's shown on the diagram on the right, you have another private endpoint here where the traffic can ingress locally and then go across the Azure SDN over here. But that's built on a higher level decision where you have separate Azure DNS private zones and they're linked like this. You sort of sever, sever this tier here. You have this one going this way, this one going this way. But again, check out the main article for the, the full ramifications of making that decision. Anyway, I hope you found it useful. Check out the other videos on the other services. And uh, gradually over time, we're going to try and build up this list here to categorize all the services that use private link. Thanks for watching.